Kepler Technologies develops a wide range of software-based communication solutions for the automation industry, allowing our customers to manage, monitor, and control a diverse set of devices and software. If you're watching this video, you're interested in EFM, and Kepware has some new, very exciting EFM technology baked into its 5.9 release. We've added two new drivers, an Enron Modbus driver and an Omni driver that support EFM export direct to FlowCal CFX V5 format. Now today I'm going to walk you through setting up an Enron Modbus driver to talk to a SCADA Pack 330 device. You can see we'll have a direct Ethernet connection to the device and we'll pull both historical uh, daily and hourly EFM data along with alarms and events. So let's get to it. So the first thing we'll do is create an Enron channel and device. Just even an encapsulation on the channel. Create a device. The device ID is 2 IP port. We'll be talking direct TCP. Import a tag. Launch the quick client, and we have a pipe diameter at 4.2 inches. Let's take a look at the EFM meter configuration. Now, a lot of devices support Enron Modbus, so you'll either need to look at your device manual or configuration software to make sure this configuration is correct. The idea here is we're trying to provide you with enough options to fit as many device configurations as possible. A lot of these attributes are detailed in the help file, so I won't describe what they are here. One important feature is this clear cache option. The driver will cache data from the device, so it only requests data once. If you need to go re-request data from the device, uh, you would set this to yes, and that would occur on the next poll. Enron Modbus supports up to 12 meters. Meter 1 is the only one enabled by default. Now each meter gets a unique meter name, uh, which we use internally as an alias in the server. We have support for both hourly and daily data and gas chromatograph data. With these configured to zero, it means we're not interested in GC data at the moment. Each meter also has an EFM mapping, and we'll look at this next. We saw that meter 1 was using the default EFM mapping. The EFM mapping is the way that we take data from the device and map it to our internal EFM model. That includes configuration, history, and alarms data. Now, ideally, you'll have one mapping for all your meters, but that doesn't need to be the case. So for configuration data, this represents the addresses we will read from the device on each poll. We support a base address syntax. So for example, if we look at pipe diameter, 7155 is a float address in Enron. So for meter one, we'll read 7155. If we go back and look at our float offset, it's 250. That means that for meter two, we'll read address 7155 plus 250, which is 7405. We provide other syntax in here for static values, uh, normal addresses. So if we see the help file for, for that syntax. History data is easier. It's basically just an array of floats that come back from the device. So we allow you to do a zero-based index into that array to assign floats to two specific attributes. So flow time is the first element, average temperature is the second, so forth and so on. To leverage the gas chromatograph data, we would just use a Q syntax in front of the index. Now alarms are very similar to configuration data. They use the base address syntax. So if I get an alarm from 3106, I know that that's meter one. It's a temperature alarm that's set to the low state. Event or audit data is actually based off the configuration data. So if, again, if I get an, an event from 7155, I know that that's a pipe diameter audit event for meter one. Now we could have multiple mappings, one maybe for orifice meters and one for turbine meters. And then in our EFM meter configuration, we can choose which mapping we'd like to use. We also support import and export of these mappings via CSV just to make life a little easier. With the device configured, let's jump over to the EFM exporter. The EFM exporter's job is to schedule the polling of meter data and the export of that data. So let's first create a poll group. If we look at the hierarchy here, a poll group is going to poll a number of meters and export that data to a number of exporters. So if we look at the poll group settings, 
Each poll group exposes a poll tag, which when written to will trigger a poll, so we can operate in an on-demand only mode. We can also have the server schedule polls. So with this configuration, we would schedule a poll 15 minutes past the hour every hour. We also have an option to poll on start. So with our polling configured, let's bring in the Enron meter. If we look at the meter configuration, we can set what data we want to gather from the meter. Let's assume we, we just want it all. And lastly, we have the, the exporter. So we support currently a, a FlowCal CFX version 5 format. You can set the history type, hourly versus daily, and then configure the file path and file name. And file path and file name support a number of wildcards. So you can see here we've used record year, month, and day, which will essentially separate these files by contract hour. And that's it. So if we wanted both hourly and daily data, we could add a number of exporters. We could add additional meters to poll, and we can add additional poll groups. So let's see it in action. I've launched a quick client, and I'm interested in the poll groups poll tag and the pipe diameter tag. First thing I'll do is write to the pipe diameter tag to create an audit event. Now I'll write to the poll tag to trigger a poll. While that's going on, I'll write to the pipe diameter tag once more. And we can see that completed. The important point here is that we're interleaving real time an EFM request. So now that the poll completed, let's take a look at the CFX file. You can see we have configuration data, some events, alarms, and history. So we can see the audit events from the pipe diameter changes, some alarms, and some history data. Thanks for watching. For additional information or to download a demo of the product, you can visit our website. If you have any other questions, please contact our sales team.